The neurological system is responsible for every movement of the human body. It functions like a computer program that determines which muscles contract or relax, at what speed and in what sequence. The importance of the nervous system to athletic performance can be demonstrated by a simple test. While seated, keeping the heels on the ground, tap the toes on both feet as fast as you can for a period of 10 seconds. The unfit athletes usually feel an increasing discomfort in the lower leg after just two seconds of tapping. This is a result of the opposing muscles trying to contract at the same time. This lack of neuromuscular coordination is the key limiting factor in sprinting. Neuromuscular coordination is the ability to turn on a muscle as you simultaneously turn off the one that opposes it. The faster you want to run, the higher level of neuromuscular coordination you need. Otherwise, at faster speed, the nervous system fails to distinguish between the signals for contraction and relaxation of the opposing muscles, which makes the athlete tighten up and slow down dramatically. Place the hand palm down on the table and raise and tap the finger on the table as hard and as quickly as possible. Then pull the finger back with the other hand and let go. The stored elastic energy stored in the muscle and the tendon and fascia surrounding muscle provides a greater force in less time. This is the stretch reflex principle of muscular contraction, the fastest people in the world use to run very fast. Muscle contraction alone is severely limited due to restraints of the speed of contraction. But this elastic stretch reflex helps make up for lack of fast twitch fibers. The elite sprinters curl up, dorsiflex, the ankle, before placing the foot on the ground. It puts a stretch on the soleus muscle. The stretch reflex goes off immediately. The foot plantar flexes and hits the ground. The stretch reflex fires again. The recall of elastic energy stored in the tendons generates tremendous power, springing the athlete forward. Oftentimes, even world-class athletes attempting to cover more ground begin to overstride, especially near the finish line, thus minimizing the stretch reflex to zero, which means they use just muscle contraction and spend more time on the ground. But the longer your foot is on the ground, the more speed you lose. Traditionally, speed and speed endurance training has focused on physiological development. However, a lot of modern research suggests that more attention should be paid to the development of neuromuscular characteristics in the physical preparation of the elite sprinters. In order to sprint, the brain must send signals to muscles through nerves to contract and relax. The nervous system must recruit a specific muscle or a group of muscles which happens in nanoseconds. This is neuromuscular coordination. It works in two distinct ways intramuscular coordination and intermuscular coordination. Intramuscular coordination involves optimizing the units within a single muscle and thus unleashing its full potential. Whereas intermuscular coordination means optimizing the interaction between muscle groups. The better communication between brain and muscles, the longer and faster you can sprint. To improve this, you need to challenge your body in a way that demands such communication. Sprinting is a skill and skills are trainable.